Next item on the agenda is the emergency management training and processing. Commissioner Schoff, I don't know if you have some comments. Thank you. Yes. Um, we have had several um, significant changes um, with emergency management, with the acquisition of um, new equipment um, from both the fire department and um, I know police department. And as well as being in the middle of hurricane season, I've had a lot of questions from residents about the city's emergency preparedness um, and looking at um, various FEMA requirements as we've had cities that um, maybe aren't up to their FEMA requirements, et cetera. And so I wanted to have a discussion um, about what the city of West Palm Beach's plan is, as well as seeing, I know um, I had a chance to view the EOC here at Station 5, and it was very eye-opening for me um, on all the great things that the city has in place and wanted to know from a commission standpoint, um, as leaders in our community, how can we better be trained? How can we be better involved and, and ready to distribute that kind of information in the case of any emergency, be it a hurricane? Uh, we now have a Brightline train that runs through our city. Um, you know, we're ever evolving. So all the great things that you've been working on, we'd love <laughs> to hear about. Uh, uh, for the record, uh, Assistant Chief Brent Bloomfield, I'm also the emergency manager for the city. Um, so I just got a, a little brief overview of uh, emergency management for the city and kind of um, maybe I can answer some of those questions and then and we'll have to take questions at the end. So just a quick, what is emergency management? This is uh, FEMA's definition of it, but basically it's how are we prepare and mitigate for anything. I know we think of uh, hurricanes here as like the big thing, but I want to remind you that uh, we were a left turn away from being Pulse nightclub and um, we were also, um, you know, the targets that happened down in Fort Lauderdale. That was a little close for home. We had a shooting at the airport and we also had uh, Stoneman Douglas. So um, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we are trying to prepare and harden the city for a lot of those things. And as you'll see, we're working on a lot of projects for that. Um, just real quick, this is how the emergency operation breaks down. Um, it goes from a level four to a level one. We're currently on level four. Anytime we have a special event, we go to level three. And of course, if we have any, any big events such as a hurricane or anything like that, we go to a level one. Um, so we have learned a lot of lessons over the last couple of years. Luckily, they've been um, near misses or brushes, but uh, Matthew and Irma, we learned some important lessons as far as us and then also our response uh, citywide up to Michael. Um, we had, uh, uh, you know, fire, police, uh, uh, utilities go up there, public works, and then, of course, myself in the state EOC. Um, we learned a lot of things from that, including our communications, internal and external were, were a big issue. Um, debris management, we learned a lot of lessons from that during Irma. Um, you know, how we need to build, build better relationships. And then one of the biggest ones we talked about was FEMA classes, specific job function training during an emergency, and how we can better prepare for that, um, especially for FEMA section chief areas, which are, you know, um, if you work in the EOC during any type of uh, storm, the section chiefs are finance, logistics, operations, planning, and then we also have a uh, liaison and PIO, and um, the liaison sits at the um, county EOC during any type of activation, and that was uh, very uh, crucial during Irma. We were uh, possibly uh, less than half a day from losing water, and we were able through the liaison and chains to get uh, what we needed up here as far as lime to get the uh, water plant back up and functioning. Um, we're also bringing in a lot of the training over the next six months, and I'll talk to that a little bit. Uh, one of our biggest things right now is the dig dignitary protection and demonstrations. We have a lot of those, especially, um, you know, when the president's in town, he's, he's here almost every weekend. And, and that's, <laughs> that's a big, uh, for us, we have to get with uh, Secret Service and the FBI constantly about th those, um, about those visits. And uh, we're always training and, and doing tabletops for those. And we did uh, one with the FBI just last year. It was a, it was a big one. Um, special and potential events, some of the training that we need for that. We actually, just did our first real unified command for fourth on Flagler, and it was uh, overall success. It was uh, it was great. We were all in the same room as far as uh, community events, police, fire. We had a representative from the National Weather Service here. We had cameras up down downtown. We were able to kind of see everything, and we were over overview. And we're actually ramping up the EOC for for that. Uh, it worked out great. We were able. I'll give you an example. We um, part of this training is making sure that everybody understands unified command and how we how we operate uh, we were able to uh, so a, a female walked up to the firefighters she saw the we have a little like we call it the popcorn machine but it's the transport unit down there um, 
they, she came up and said, hey, I lost my child. Here's a description. As she's giving a description to them, they're giving it to us over the radio. Police is listening in. They're giving a description out to all the police officers. We've got the cameras up and running, and we were able to look for that person. We located them with less than two minutes. So that's just an example of how Unified Command works and how this training is getting into that. Um, you know, these are some of the things that, that we do. We call them soft targets. Um, anything that we do as far as a special event is considered a soft target. Baseball is a soft target. Any of these things that we try, are trying to harden against right now, including our facilities, are considered soft targets. Um, so these are some of the upcoming uh, opportunities. Uh, Chief Mooney and myself are collaborating with m on multiple departments. We're actually doing uh, hazard and vulnerability walkthroughs right now of a lot of the, we just did one of City Hall and the library. We're getting ready to do one of the, of the um, uh, public works and fleet areas. And we're gonna continue that and do every building in the city. Um, one of the things that we're looking at is improved communications through Everbridge. We're actually gonna upgrade from Code Red to Everbridge. It's what um, a lot of the uh, counties in the state and, and nationwide are using. It's gonna, it's gonna be a cost neutral for us, but it's gonna improve our communications overall throughout the city. Um, changing city culture through training. I think that we, we elaborated on that. We're, we actually are way ahead of a lot of municipalities when it comes to FEMA training. Um, we have people, when we do FEMA training, I usually do uh, multiples every year of the three and 400 class. And um, it's, it's amazing to me the people that come and they say, wow, we're, we're not nowhere near where you guys are at. So uh, kudos to, to everybody in the city for that. Um, we're also working on loss mitigation and FEMA funding for city projects, something that hasn't been done before. It's money that's out there, and we're not going to get it. And uh, it's a lot of money that we're leaving on the table. So me and Chief Mooney are working on that project with, with engineering and building, and, and we're trying to, to figure out the best way to go after those funds and also with our loss mitigation specialists. Um, we're doing uh, vulnerability assessments on all city properties, which I talked to before. Cybersecurity is a big one. Uh, we actually, I just sent Adam to a training, uh, the AWR-136 training down in um, Fort Lauderdale. He came back and said, wow, that was amazing. So we're getting that. That's coming in the county, and we're going to send about 12 people to that training to get us up and running for some cybersecurity uh, issues that we have dealt with. Also, we're going to continue to do our, we were doing biannual um, tabletop exercises. We'd like to extend that to a quarterly tabletop, one of those being like a blackout day where cybersecurity, we black everything out. And you're not allowed to use anything uh, city as far as uh, um, computers or tablets or anything that's technology driven. So we could see how that would happen if we had similar to what Riviera did. Uh, we're working on that at this time. Uh, current EM projects. Uh, we just got done doing the uh, vulnerability hazard and vulnerability assessment for the city, the natural one, which is natural disasters. Uh, we had Greenleaf NEMAC come in and do an assessment of the city. We worked with them for almost two years, and we're gonna we are going to ad address the issues that they that they came up with, and we're going to try to do that through PPL and FEMA funds. Uh, we're also doing me and Chief Mooney are working on a man-made disaster hazard and vulnerability assessment right now. It's probably going to be another year or two project. Um, the FEMA funding, LMS, PPL, HMPG, uh, these are all FEMA funding sources that we can get money through. They're matching funds. Some of the PPL money is uh, it's a 75% it's a with a 25% match, but we can get the 25% through HMPG funds or HUD funds. Um, EOC upgrade, what we're doing is we're upgrading the servers right now so that we can make that a true unified command post. So when we get the cameras throughout the city, um, what we can do is we can see everything when we have these big events, especially on Clematis and, and, on, and on Flagler. Uh, we're working on the uh, uh, continuity of operations plan, emergency operations plan, and special events training through Unified Command. So these are all things that we're, <laughs> we're working on, and it's a lot, um, and um, it's two people, so you got to give us a little time, but we're, uh, we're working on it at this point. Um, so training, some of the things that we're, we're looking at, and I'm trying to, you know, the, the saying, be brief, brother, be brief. I'm trying to get to that. So uh, meeting with vendors uh, on July 24th to discuss incoming classes. We're going to bring all of those section chief classes and the classes for um, executive, executive policy group in the next six months to a year. We're going to have all of those classes available. And then I'm going to send you, uh, everybody, all the commissioners and, and um, city staff, um, a, a copy of this so that you can go to these FEMA training sites. One is CERT track, which is the state one. And then, of course, um, the FEMA site. And with that, I'll take questions. Thank you, Chief Bloomfield. I think that we would all agree, you know, we're so appreciative of the work that you're doing and that oftentimes 
when you're doing your best work is when we don't even realize it, because that means disasters aren't happening or we're not feeling the effects of it. So thank you for that. Questions, comments? Um, thank you. Uh, I just had a, a one question, well, a couple of questions, sorry. Um, as far as stress testing our system, do we, you had mentioned about like technology blackouts. Do we ever do, or do we have a schedule of full system stress tests where we work with police, fire, local <coughs> hospitals? So if there would be any kind of, not natural disaster, but social disaster that yes. we're ready? So annually, um, um, at least one time annually, we do a, a, what we consider an active shooter or, or some type of man-made disaster where we do training that is all-encompassing. It's police, fire, we alert, the, uh, we, we alert the hospitals, we get actors from like Palm Beach Atlantic involved. So we do a full-fledged um, drill, and, and one of the last ones we did was at um, 2601 North Flagler where we actually detonated some of the doors and uh, we didn't tell anybody we were doing it. We don't tell anybody when we're doing these drills, and we scared a few <laughs> few citizens and people that were driving by. So, yeah, we, we are constantly doing th these drills, and, and we, don't, we don't like to advertise that because we don't want people knowing what our tactics are. Sure. Um, same thing with when we, uh, we work a real event. There's, um, there's some things that we're doing that we don't, we don't let out into the media. We don't tell anybody, and there's only a group of people about this big that know what's going on. I think so. that's the true way to stress test is to have those actual conditions in in helping with those things. You mentioned Everbridge. Is there any other kind of technology that's either in the works or we're looking down the line as far as, you know, when there's an Amber Alert, we all get a message on our phone. When there's a Silver Alert, do we have mm -hmm. any citywide system as we're, you know, mostly smartphones at this yeah. point? Yeah, so Everbridge will, will give us that, that functionality. It actually is going to be a huge step up from what we're, we're currently doing. Um, it's uh, something that I've already used through um, the county with my uh, incident management team that I'm on. We do all of our alerts through that, all of our alerting. And we also, um, the county uses that for whenever they send out any of our um, emergency manager notices. So, right. we, yeah, we get it. We do. We're gonna, we are going to upgrade in the next, I don't want to do it during hurricane season, but as soon as hurricane season's over, we are going to make that upgrade. And then how can we as commissioners, you mentioned a number of trainings, is there is there something that's appropriate for this group if anyone would want to jump in? I'm throwing my own name in the hat, I'll, <laughs> I'll speak for myself. Yeah. Um, but something that we can be involved in so that we can be um, better trained and have more knowledge. Absolutely, and, and first of all, I want to thank you know, all the commissioners for coming out, all of you came out. Um, Com Commissioner Nearing has been out multiple times um, and previously, and, and I just want to thank everybody for coming out. All of you came out to the EOC and kind of took a tour, and then also I, I kind of give you a rundown of what your responsibility or what I think your responsibilities would be during during a storm. Um, the What I would say, there is a training going to come up. It's a one, G191 class, and I'll, we're, we're going to have that for um, the executive policy group, and you're more than welcome to join. And we'll, of course, we'll open that up to other municipalities because there's a lot of municipalities that that don't offer that. Um, is you know the biggest thing for the commission is to during a disaster or after disaster is being with your constituents, getting getting that face to face interaction, getting that interaction in, on you know um, on the streets, you know, and, and kind of just feeling out what what their needs are. Um, and then kind of getting that back to us in the in the EOC. Also, whenever we put out a notice, we'll put out a notice to all of you know all of you first before we even do a briefing of what's going to happen. So you can let your constituents know. One of the biggest things that that I you know happened up in the Panhandle, we lost complete communications. There was no cell phones. You know, even though you'll hear AT and T and Verizon say there was, I, there wasn't. <laughs> um, there also, you know, there wasn't a lot of uh, radio communication. There, there wasn't a lot of communication except for face-to-face. -face. So that's what we're going to be, you know, whenever that, that big storm happens or we have an issue with something more major, um, we, we need you to kind of get all their information from the people in, yours, in your districts back to the EOC that, so we can work on getting everything back up and running and recover from whatever it is. Thank you. Commissioner Riles. Um, I just have one question. Uh, given the events that occurred in Virginia Beach, have we done anything to try and uh, harden our target here? Yes, sir. We, uh, we actually did a vulnerability assessment through the building with myself, uh, Chief Mooney, Tim Scott from RISC, um, IT, um, Yolanda Mack from IT, and what we looked at uh, was how we're going to, where we're going to be placing more cameras, we're going to re be restricting access, you're going to 
see a directive come out here shortly restricting access to in and out of the building. Uh, we won't be letting people use side doors anymore. I mean, it's going to be a pain for a little while, and, I get, and people are going to be a little upset by some of the things that we're doing, but we're doing them for the protection of everybody, um, especially in this building, but also citywide. Great. Thank you so no much, Chief Thank Bloomfield. You. We appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thank you.